Bismillahir uh, Rahmanir Rahim. So today we are going to discuss about the cytoplasmic signaling, and in this cytoplasmic signaling, we are going to discuss the uh, RAS induced signaling pathway. Generally, RAS communicates inside the cell by using three salient pathway routes. We are going to discuss two pathways over here in this video. So RAS RAF pathway, the upon activation of RAS by activation. So far we learned this activated RAS has a GTP with its binary form. Now this upon activation tries to translocate a distantly placed, now let me uh, draw a cell over here. Now let's draw a nucleus and then we say that there is a RAS bound with a uh, membrane part and then upon its activation, let's draw some signals over here, then uh, upon its activation it actually helps to translocate to translocate these RAF particles closer to it and then these RAF particles came into the vicinity of RAS upon binding with RAS RAF complex it become phosphorylated now this phosphorylated RAF which is shown in red color over here is actually been uh, bring closer to the plasma membrane either of the cell or of the cytoplasmic organelles too. So RAS RAF complex formation uh, further needs to activate a range of other uh, proteins and now these proteins are uh, called as MEK. Now this MEK is an other protein which is being uh, what you can say also gets phosphorylated. Now this RAF complex which is labeled as in red color tries to uh, formulate an other phosphor relate another complex which is called as MEK. Now upon the translocation of MEK, this MEK has a very interesting role. It has a dual specificity kinase property. By dual specificity means it is also not only phosphorylating serine threonine but it also has an ability to phosphorylate tyrosine components. All right? So serine, threonine and tyrosine all these uh, kinase in the amino acids are being phosphorylated by this MEK and then and this MEK so that means it is actually phosphorylating a wider range of proteins now these wider range of proteins phosphorylations lead to the activation of two more additional components those these components are called as extracellular receptor kinases they are called ARAC1 and then they are called as extracellular receptor kinase, extracellular receptor kinase, ARIC2. Now ARIC1 and ARIC2 produces a wider range of signals which gets entry inside the nucleus. And once entered inside the nucleus, they are going to trigger certain phenomena like protein synthesis, transcription factors, chromatin remodeling is being introduced. Alright, so let's draw this pathway somewhat like this over here and uh, MEK and then we have learned that there are two molecules they are called ARIC1 and ARIC2 alright so we can like uh, use another color over here now if we say ARIC1 and ARIC2 okay interestingly there is another other alternate name for ARIC1 and ARIC2 pathway activation and this is generally called as mitogen activated protein kinase signaling so MAP K stands for these two compounds what you are looking at right now and this MEK is also termed as MA mitogen activated protein kinase kinase 2 RAF which also itself acts as a proto uh, as an oncogen in certain cancers could be also labeled as MAP triple K all right because it is responsible for the kinase activity of MEK and which further leads to the kinase kinase properties of ARIC1 and ARIC2. So that's why you can also say that RAS RAF induced pathway could also be termed as mitogen activated protein kinase pathway. Alright, that's what we learned in RAS, uh, one form of RAS activation root. And uh, in the next part, RAS. RAF has a self-sufficient entity, alright, so activation of RAF itself can trigger MEK pathway that we learned just in the last slide that B-RAF pathway observed in melanoma patients. The 
activation of BRAF irrespective of whether there is a RAF's involvement or not has been reported in around 50% cases of melanoma patients have, a, have an overactivated RAF inside them rather than a RAS mutation while the RAS mutation is present in remaining one third of these patients so there is a proof of redundancy that this pathway is more actively involved in um, skin cancers all right now eric pathway is the main factor responsible for the increase of protein uh, phosphorylation this is the signal i have just make uh, your life more easy so p stands for phosphorylation now if somebody wants to know what are the downstream elements which the MAP kinase is going to communicate inside the nucleus. So ERIC1 and ERIC2 are going to induce certain uh, factors and then these factors are going to perform some salient uh, features. Let me change the color because I it looks too what you can see. Um, so the first property of uh, MAP signaling kinase basis would be a chromatin remodeling so chromatin remodeling is being observed all right the second property is of protein synthesis then this protein synthesis is also been notified and there are the range of transcription factors which are being induced for transcription factors we can remember the words FOS and June which I have discussed in my uh, last lecture which is responsible for immediate early genes upon a serum starvation lecture so FOS and John are released and FOS John release led to the formation on, uh, of uh, cells proliferation phenomena they trigger cell proliferation as we learned from IA IEG things good and together if the FOS and John combine together June combine together that complex is generally called as AP1 Okay, do remember this thing. The complex formation of these two transcription factors inside the nucleus also called as AP1. Okay, so for protein synthesis, uh, signals transmitted to the nucleus are generally containing elongation factor E I F4, elongation factor 4. And for chromatin modeling, you can say MSK1 is the key element which is being phosphorylated and is activated form travels inside the nucleus. So MSK1 and EIF4 elongation factor 4 and these FOS and John are the elements which are which are being facilitated by MAP signaling kinase. So this is the one root of RAS mediated pathway. The next route is RAS is also responsible for the phosphorylation of lipids, phospholipids, all right? So that is a unique property of RAS. Now phosphorylation of lipids is being induced by in by RAS via AKT pathway, AKT pathway. So what you are looking in the right panel are the phospholipids elements. So these are the two fatty acids and these colors are the hydrophobic head groups and this color is basically an indication of inositol group attached to the phospholipid uh, membrane carbohydrates domain so the inositol group attached is of hydrophilic in nature carbohydrate structure and its phosphate addition uh, leads to the phosphoinositol group now we are discussing about the AKT pathway before going to the AKT pathway we should learn that the final product of this inositol mediated activation are two in form number one inositol 3 phosphates ip3 or pip3 okay yeah pip3 compounds will be bounded in if the structure is remain in bounded to the cell membrane so the bounded form mira the structure would be called as pip3 and if in bounded or freely floating inside this cytoplasm then it will be ip3 elements now IP3 compounds are generally called as intracellular hormones or second messengers. They diffuse away from cell membrane and trigger calcium release with second part as diacyl glycerol. Just remember the names right now. I'm going to present this in a more elaborative way in the next slide. So they are responsible for the activation of key protein kinase C, serine threonine kinase activity. And PIP3 attracts more pH in a plaquestrin home domain. 
carrying elements to attach the cell membrane Achha. so how it works look over here this is a plasma membrane phospholipid bilayer now these are the green these two green legs are basically the fatty acids bind together to a glycerol and this glycerol has a phosphodiester bond bind to inositol now inositol complex is basically turning this whole uh, thing as and it's labeled as phosphotidyl inositol pi pi now these pi's are generally present at a very low concentration at a very low concentration on the plasma membranes okay and once they are present on inside the plasma membranes they are generally present in a very low density okay so what i am looking how is the plasma membrane and in this plasma membrane there are certain inositol elements there are certain inositol elements which i am going to label as yellow over here okay and they are, they are difficult to read let me um, draw them again over here for our ways now this is a cell in this cell there there are this is if what you can say phospholipid bimembrane and towards the inner side towards the inner side there are compounds which are called inositols and they are present and this inositol formation is actually been induced by a phosphodiester bond so they are called phosphotidyl inositols so upon the activation of a ras gtp ras gtp some way over here or around here let's suppose this activation is being induced in this part uh, let's change uh, the color right now for this process so that we can get a clear understanding oh sorry everything on uh, no worries now we are going to get it back this is a cell and uh, let's show it has GTP activation as in red color all right so the rest GTP complex it's in active form this activation leads to an increase phosphorylation increase uh, phosphorylation of phosphatidylinositol so PIK kinases are responsible for the addition of two more phosphates 4 and 5 and it is called as phosphatidyl inositol phosphatidyl inositol okay now this phosphatidyl inositol has two channels either it is going to be converted from PIP to just follow this route from PIP to it is going to be converted as PIP3 okay forget about the chemical structure right now just for A's so there is a phosphatidyl inositol which is being phosphorylated first into two phosphorylates then there are three phosphate groups attached to the inositol item or it gets it get out it get divided or cleaved into two forms number one is called diacyl glycerol diacyl glycerol now this complex is called as diacyl glycerol and the other part is generally labeled as inositol triphosphate because the third phosphate is the phosphate of the phosphodiester bond formed between glycerol and inositol complex so uh, this is the story then upon the formation what is the role of each molecule look diacyl glycerol upon the freeance of uh, this inositol uh, molecule is responsible for the activation of protein kinase C that's what you need to remember right now and the inositol triphosphate IP3 is responsible and this free floating molecule is responsible for the release of calcium from the certain parts of cellular organelles right and in case these two things are not happening and PIP2 is converted into PIP3 then this PIP3 complex which is again membrane bound structure is responsible for the teetering, teetering of additional pH domain proteins okay now we learned so far these things that there is an inositol element present with the phospholipid membrane and this uh, phospholipid membrane inositol is being further additionally phosphorylated upon the exposure of RAS and RAS activated form results 
in the additional phosphorylation has two options either to get cleaved either to get cleaved like this and are remain bounded in case if it remain bounded it is going to uh, ask for more proteins like structures to come and bind and find an active vicinity over here else there is no interaction and this free floating molecule acts as a free bird inside the cytoplasm and responsible for the release of calcium now i have deciphered this part with the additional characteristics k her individual molecule what is playing what its role so we learn these three things then we came across an interesting finding which is this ras complex is not solely meant for the activation of uh, uh, this ras ref g complex sometimes bind with pik directly and it re reduces the burden of these cascade processes and convert it directly into pip3 form else akt protein kinase ph domain upon binding with this leads to the activation of these suppressor cell apoptosis stimulate cell proliferation cell motility and angiogenesis so the negative feedback loop says that pip3 signals are low in cells now normal cells doesn't contain in sufficient amount of pip3 signals and then how the amount of pip3 is being regulated what is responsible p10 look over this example p2 is converted into pip3 now pip3 revert back under the influence of p10 because it is going to cleave one part of this phosphorylated group and once this is removed there won't be an additional binding so it is an inactivated a negative feedback loop through how ras communicates um, within the channels thank you very much for your time so far we have learned two signaling pathways in this lecture